Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Light Sim 2020 where I'm going to try out the Carinado Waco YMF-5. This is an old biplane, well originally an old biplane, but it's still in production and they've sort of updated the avionics on it and everything. So the version of this that's in here, it still has a radial engine and everything, a wooden propeller as you can see, but the internal uh, instrumentation is a little bit more modern. And it's not a particularly fast plane, but this is more of a sightseeing sort of plane. And I'm going to try it out. To be honest, I'd rather not. It is a payware plane. It's only 15 bucks, so it's not bad. But to be honest, I'd rather not have so many payware planes. But we don't have that many freeware planes for Microsoft Flight Sim, I've noticed. Not like in previous versions of Flight Sim or x 11. Yes, it's only been out for a certain amount of time, but... If the airplane maker system in the game was a little bit more accessible, I would have expected people to have imported a lot more planes from FSX into this by now. So I'm just pointing out that I'm just getting a little bit antsy for planes. Uh, I would love to test more fewer planes. There just aren't as many. So here we are, paying money, alas. Anyway, uh, a few things to note. Uh, it says that the center of mass is pretty far forward. Uh, in fact, out of the limit, the CG is out of the limit. Uh, that's probably because it's biplane. I think it's just misunderstanding that. Uh, I've already tried flying it. It seems to fly fine, so this is not incorrect. You can see various slots. The passenger slots are actually in front of the pilot. And we'll, we'll keep it half-fueled. I'm flying at Tokyo today. And we'll fly out of Kisarazu, which is across Tokyo Bay, and we'll fly across the bay into Tokyo. And let's see how that goes. Now, when you start it up, it decides not to start it up yet. You can bring out the iPad somehow, though... I forget how to do that, actually. Uh, there it is. Uh, so, the iPad lets you select whether you want a cold and dark, ready for taxi, ready for takeoff. Uh, but, that's fine. Uh, let's try and start it up first. It doesn't come with a manual. And it also doesn't come with checklists. I really wish some, especially the payware plane makers, would use the checklist function that they decided to add into the game. But they never seem to. Anyway, uh, this is the tank cutoff. So that's the left fuel tank. And that's the right fuel tank. And then we just have to hopefully start the thing. It, it's not complicated here. Okay. Seems good. And then this here is the parking brake. And so we're moving. So this is the cockpit. I'll just keep it moving slowly for now. The rear view mirrors are a little bit weird. They don't seem to show anything. And I guess that's not a functionality we have here. And while we're just rolling on the ground, there's the outside view. Many rivets. It looks good. I mean, Caronado makes good looking planes, generally speaking. And it's not a very complicated plane, so we don't expect too much to go wrong, right? Uh, it doesn't even have an autopilot. Does it have an autopilot? Oh, I guess it does. Anyway, let's get on with it before we run out of run. I don't think we can run out of runway. Now, ground handling is a pain. Oh, 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 as with so many other biplanes. And you can see I'm having a little bit of trouble with that. Uh tail draggers in general. I'm all over the place. No. Uh, okay. Okay. I got back. I got back. Don't go off now. Don't go off now. Just a little departure. It's fine. It's fine. So yeah, I still have to get used to the ground handling here. And you can hear the sound. The sound is good. It's got a good sound to it. So as far as sightseeing goes, the view is very nice. We'll weave through buildings in Tokyo, 
and see how that goes. If I... Well, there's some aerodynamic sounds for you. Well, inverted... I mean, it's not hopeless uh, in basic aerobatic stuff, but it's not at the same level as the pit special. It sort of moans and groans a bit more. Oh, we can see Mount Fuji there. What is that tall tower over there? I guess that's in Yokohama. It's interesting. A fairly tall building over in Yokohama. And I think we can see the sky tree there. Yeah, that is Tokyo Sky Tree. I don't see Tokyo Tower. And frankly, the the photogrammetry buildings are... Oh, there's Tokyo Tower. Uh, photogrammetry buildings are a little bit iffy at this distance. They don't have the crispness that I would like to see, but anyway. I just wanted to see what this building in Yokohama is. I decided not to have the instrumentation in the exterior view, especially for this plane, which its flight envelope isn't exactly particularly challenging. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to need the details. Max speed on this is actually a little bit more than 200 miles an hour. So, even though we're slightly descending here, we're not threatening to overtake that. Cruise speed is much less, it's like a 120. Translates to about 100 knots. So, we can see Tokyo over there, or a little bit of it anyway. The huge ports at uh, Tokyo and Yokohama here. I think this bridge at Yokohama is supposed to be one of the special features. I mean, at least it doesn't look horrible, so <laughs> I'll take it. Um, can we fly under it though? Let me do a deep dive here. Oh, my at uh, altimeter is not properly calibrated. I've got the wrong pressure by quite a lot. Wow, those boats are racing. Oh! I crashed into the bridge. <laughs> okay, well... I'll try again. Actually, you know what, I'll take off from Haneda this time. It'd be easier if I flew from external view when trying to fly under a bridge, of course. Which is why I don't fly in external view when flying under the bridge, because it's cheating. Uh, so they didn't provide a sort of proper manual. They did have a data sheet and a control recommendation. The control recommendation was a single sheet PDF and that was 53 megabytes for some reason. And I thought that was a little bit excessive. I don't know why Carnado couldn't compress that a little bit better. Well, at least the startup is simple and clickable. Okay, let me try and take off smoothly in this, but it's not easy. And obviously, it's supposed to be take off, uh, able to take off pretty darn quickly. It just swerves really fast to the right here. See that? It's tough to prepare for that properly. It's a very sudden swerve to the left. Oh, sorry, right. <laughs> Might be helpful if I knew which direction it was swerving in. I guess. Well, I'll have to get the hang of that. There aren't any, like, study level aircraft, but there are little things that I can improve upon as far as flying some of them. I mean, at least it's not as bad as the Blerio 11. That's a heck of a thing to try and fly. So, 
Haneda Airport. Let's get a good look around here. Try not to collide into anything yet. It has five liveries. I like this one the best. Uh, there are some reddish ones. A flaming one, I think. Red and yellow. Pretty typical for biplane kind of stunt work sort of deal. So, from Haneda, we're up closer to Tokyo itself. So, we'll just head in and take a look. And then maybe I'll have another try at that bridge later. We'll see what kind of lag we get, considering Tokyo is pretty dense in photogrammetry and everything. As far as my settings are concerned, I suppose that's worth checking on. Uh, graphics is on custom. I'm going to set it to one of the presets. Uh, let's just try ultra. Let's just try ultra and see what happens. But I've got a 30 frame limit, because I'm recording at 30 frames per second anyway. Uh, and... Uh, so that's what it sets on ultra. I'm gonna reduce the motion blur. I don't. I guess that's normally what I end up with custom on though. So there we are, and we'll see traffic. Well, that's the aircraft traffic. Road vehicle. I want all the road vehicles. I don't care. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Okay. And data limit is off right now. Anyway. So we've got day limit off, we've got ultra traffic, and ultra settings. So this is as bad as it gets, basically, <laughs> uh, as far as performance. Though, so as good as it gets as far as the look of the thing, I suppose. Even the max traffic does not seem like a whole lot of traffic. Try and get alongside the roadway here. I mean, I guess it's a fair amount. It's not a rush hour or anything, but it's a fair amount of vehicles. The photo textures really make the highway quite muddy, though. It's not bad. It could probably do more, though. port side of Tokyo. It's got some interesting little details there. The waterfront here. Oh, there's a building. I'm going to head towards Tokyo Tower, I think. You can see it's a bit choppy, and of course I'm recording at the same time, so there's that. So maybe for comparison, I'll drop down to high end and see what happens. I'll still reduce the motion blur. This is going to be more of a graphics test than anything else. But again, Tokyo is an interesting place to do this at because it's got so much stuff going on. Motion blur is low. Okay. So high end now. It does perform a little bit better. It's a shame I can't fly under Tokyo Tower. It's got a building under. Otherwise, that would be an interesting challenge. See the building there. Well, you saw from the bridge that I can collide into things. That is, that is a fact that 
this is not without its dangers. I think there's the Imperial Palace grounds in front of us, the greenery. We can sort of see Sky Tree up ahead too. Uh, yeah. This is the palace grounds. And as far as the sightseeing plane goes, this is pretty good. One thing is you don't necessarily, not only do you not want a plane that goes particularly fast, you also want, well, an open cockpit is nice, and also you don't want it to have that much of a frame rate impact. Yeah, this, this is really nice. It's a little bit weird how well defined the edge of the buildings. Uh, in other words, there's an area where the buildings are being rendered, and then beyond that is just like open field for now. I'm sure as we get closer to it, it'll start rendering buildings, but it's still a little bit weird. There's a patch here that doesn't seem to have much buildings, which is interesting. Let me see, see from outside. Maybe that was just an illusion. Yeah. Oh no, right here. This bit doesn't have the buildings in 3D. See? Those are just 2D. This area right here. They've messed up. <laughs> They've messed up this little block right here. Anyway, uh, sky tree. Patch, please. No, uh, no, no, they're coming in. They're coming in now. Those buildings that were two-dimensional, not three-dimensional, they just appeared. Interesting. Yeah, it's probably being taxed at this point. It's a good rendition from this view. You can see Tokyo Tower there and Skytree in the back there. A little park here. Okay, well, no, now that now we have cars over here, that's a fair amount of cars right there. Nice road vehicles. In this view, anyway. Okay, so I think we'll try one more time for Yokohama Bridge and see what happens. I'll improve my approach a bit. I felt that my approach was a little bit lacking. We were in a steep dive and so not very accurate at all. Yeah, I would say this plane is enjoyable, that's for sure. I wonder how it would be in tough weather though. I should try that sometime. It's pretty easy to fly right now. Let me take a look at my weather setting. Why, why don't we just go ahead and do that? This is live weather. It's a pretty nice day out in Tokyo. But let's say... Uh, storm, sure. Okay. Let's see how it is in the storm. Temporarily. Well, there's some sound. I hear rain hitting the fuselage and wings. I think that's what I'm hearing. I think that's custom. You can sort of tell that the wind is blowing me sideways. Ah, oh, there's some thunder. To be honest though, uh, the, the effect of the on the plane of the gusts is sort of brownie in motion in the game. In other words, it averages out to zero, as opposed to the way wind actually works, which it doesn't necessarily average out to zero. Uh, you, uh, you can get pretty gusted one way or another instead of it ultimately balancing out. I should figure out what the heck the barometer is, huh? My barometer setting is obviously... Wow, 20... is on 27? No wonder it seems off. 
Who said to 27.99 anyway? Actually, it's a storm. It's probably pretty low pressure right now. Why do I get the feeling the pressure is still 29.92 anyway? Even though we're in the middle of a storm. Yeah, that, that seems to make sense. Nope, I need to go a little bit to the left here. Not a very stormy storm at the moment, but then again, we fly fairly low, so we're under most of the clouds. Maybe it's a little bit lower pressure than what we've got right now. Not much rain on the windshield, but then the rain would have to approach the windshield at a very particular angle to actually make it. So, um, it had, uh, since we're going fast, I don't think wind would actually hit the windshield. Uh, uh, rain would actually hit the windshield. The wing is in the way. Oh, there's the bridge over there to the left. I'll fly over Yokohama first, and then we'll see the bridge again. Nice flow to the waterways, though. I like how dynamic the water is. It looks like it's under the influence of a storm. Not sure which way the water should be flowing, but uh, I mean, I guess it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it should be going this way. It's pretty good. So, Yokohama, everyone. that uh, carousel could do with a little bit of work. Uh, I guess photogrammetry isn't really meant for that, huh? And there's a baseball field here. can read that sign. Hear it? I hear rain pelting again. And actually, the body looks a little bit wet, uh, uh, but of course it's metallic, so it always looks a little bit wet, I suppose. I mean, shiny, that way. Well, there's the bridge again, but I'm not really set up to go under it. Uh, let me come around this way first. Okay, back into the cockpit, like I said. Gotta do it fair. It might be that there just isn't a way of going under the bridge safely. If they've put colliders underneath it, it might be that I can't do that. I've obviously got damage on. None of that cheating business. At least my altimeter's right this time. And yeah, it's uh, even though we're in the middle of a storm, it's 29.92. Oh, the cars aren't driving underneath it, though. Well, I got shaken up by the wind a little bit, but I think I cleared the bridge, so. But honestly, I mean, like I said, I should be able to do something much bigger than this underneath the bridge, so. Anyway, good times. Let me try and land at Haneda now. There are vehicles driving on the top of the bridge, but for some reason there are also vehicles driving underneath the bridge. I think they've left a roadway down there that they might want to exclude. There is a smoke switch, but I don't think it does anything right now. 
So if you were wondering about that, no smoke. We've got a lot of wind here. What is driving there? Is that a truck? Why is a truck coming onto the runway? Gosh darn it. The truck shouldn't be using the taxiway, surely. I've hopped a lot. Okay, please don't spin out. I'm, I'm going to the left and I can't stop it. Well, the windsock is saying I'm going in this direction. I uh, generally do not try to use the brakes on tail draggers much. Okay, now I can turn right. Oh, oh not that much. Okay, outside view. Ooh. I mean, taxiing is no problem, actually. Um... Especially since it's an open cockpit tail dragger, and it's got a steerable wheel, a uh, rear wheel too. It's just around 40 miles an hour, it tends to be really bad. But as far as taxiing goes, I don't think there's any big problem, as long as you keep it slow. I've certainly had worse taxiing experiences. So there you have it. Our little Waco F-Series plane. Let me see if I can apply brakes safely here. Uh, don't go down. See, uh, otherwise, uh, sometimes when you apply brakes when it's going really fast, you'll pitch forward pretty badly and then ruin the propeller. Let me just park here. It's reasonably fun, especially at the in the photogrammetry areas, I think. Should try a New York or something. But anyway, with that, and with the parking brake on and I'll say thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time